Hey friends, Ash here with Incense with another fragrance review. Today I'm taking a look at a fragrance from the house of Zoologist. This one, Zoologist Dodo. This is the first Zoologist fragrance that I'm reviewing on this channel, but it won't be the last. This is a fragrance that I covered on This Week in Fragrance a uh, number of months back before it was released. This one and then Chameleon covered them both at the same time. And I do have both of those fragrances, so I may end up going ahead and just reviewing both of them. But I wanted to do Dodo first. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the presentation on this one, then break down the fragrance. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's check out their presentation for Zoologist Dodo. First up, the box. This is a really nice box. I really enjoy the Zoologist presentation just all the way around. Think that it's beautiful. The box and the bottle, just everything here works. Anyway, you've got the name of the house, name of the fragrance here. You have the specific sticker to the fragrance. I really like the design that they use, giving these animals a lot of personality there. Here's the spine of the box, kind of has it resemble a book to an extent. Then on the back, you have your sticker with ingredient information. On the bottom, you'll find a sticker like so that has your batch information. And then the box actually opens up like that. Your bottle fits in nicely here. It's got a, a velvety foam lining. And then on the inside here, you have more information on the fragrance along with the note breakdown here at the bottom. Zoologist has a really nice box. Great attention to detail here. And here is the bottle. Again, I can't overstate it here. I really, really like the presentation here. These bottles look great. It's got that nice slant to it here. Just a, a fantastic looking presentation. And these come in 60 milliliter size. So that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Usually something would be a 50 milliliter size or 100, uh, but these are gonna be 60. And you can see that on the bottom of the bottle here with this sticker and then your batch code. Cap is very nice. You can see the Zoologist logo here at the top of the cap. It's got a nice leather wrapping. Does not click into place, but it slides very snugly into place. And then the atomizer on these, very good as well. Also, this bottle feels really substantial in your hand. It's got a good amount of heft. Just a really nice presentation. Doesn't feel like they skimped at all. So there we go, presentation for Zoologist Dodo. Two big thumbs up from me. And before you go any further, I need to let you know that this bottle was sent to me for review by Victor Wong. Thanks, Victor. He is the owner slash creative director of Zoologist Fragrances. But as usual with every review I've ever done, that does not affect what I say. If I hate this, I'll let you know. And a quick primer for anybody who's unaware of what Zoologist Fragrances is or or what the fragrances are and maybe are confused by a fragrance named Dodo. Zoologist Fragrances is a fragrance house that is inspired by the animal that each fragrance is based off of. So they have a, a whole bunch of releases, uh, Dodo, Chameleon that I just talked about, Bat, Rhinoceros, Hyrax, Camel, uh, their new one, Squid, and on and on and on. Each fragrance is supposed to convey how it might smell if you were to be in that animal's environment or around that animal. And as I showed you in the, in the close-up of the presentation part, there's a write-up on the inside of here, and that kind of gets across how this fragrance uh, should smell to you or what it's trying to convey. So a lot of the Zoologist fragrance releases uh, would be considered very daring or bold. Uh, some people might even say challenging or unwearable, depending on you know, what you like in fragrances or how far along your fragrance journey is in terms of things that you've smelled. What I mean by that is if you're the type of person who has only ever smelled Dior Sauvage, Aqua de Jo, and Bleu de Chanel, and then suddenly you smell Zoologist T-Rex, you're probably not gonna be in for a really good time because you're not gonna be prepared to appreciate how that smells. And that's not a bad thing. Everybody likes fragrances for different reasons. And if you are into just very versatile, people-pleasing designer scents, that's awesome and there's nothing wrong with that. So with all that out of the way, so a long kind of diatribe there, let's talk about this one, Dodo. This one, when you first spray it on, does come across a little bit astringent and animalic. Uh, that's in the first few minutes or so when it's strongest, that astringency. Uh, it has uh, at times an almost urine-like or indolic quality to it. But again, that's only in the first few minutes. And for some people, that's going to be awesome because that's something very different than what you'll smell in most mainstream fragrances. 
after that first few minutes, it starts to shade into more of an animalic green ferny fragrance uh, with a little bit of sweetness from lychee. And that's not a fruit that's used super often in fragrances. So when you do smell that, it gives it a little bit of an exotic feel, like a little bit of an exotic fruity sweetness. There's also a little bit of raspberry adding in with that fruity sweetness as again, this shades away from that astringent opening, but the raspberry is more a bit player. It's kind of behind the lychee. It's not as prominent, not as an, an important of a note here. And as Dodo heads into the mid, you get this salty amber green note that comes out. And that really starts to play along with the fern and the lychee and becomes very apparent. It does retain a little bit of that animalic quality into the mid, but again, we're talking about zoologist fragrances, which are fragrances based off of animals. So if it didn't have any of that, it wouldn't make as much sense to me. In the mid, to me, it has an almost familiar, while at the same time, exotic and strange scent to it. And I don't mean that negatively. This is gonna maybe come across a little bit strange. <laughs> uh, but to me, it reminds me a little bit of when I was a little kid and I was running around my grandmother's yard in her garden area. So when I was running around through there and it was hot outside and you know I would have sweat dripping off my face and I could smell the different flowers, the different fruits, um, just the, the foliage and kind of that uh, in the south when it gets really hot, I don't know if maybe it's like the pollen and everything gets into the air as well. It's just got this, this unique scent to it. It reminds me a little bit of that, of just the, the sun beating down on you. Again, that little bit of sweat on your face, uh, on your body, uh, the, the tart aromas of, of different flowers, fruits, plants, um, just all of that kind of whipping around reminds me a little bit of that. The best way for me to put it, um, that it smells familiar and at the same time, different and strange. It's salty, it's warm, it's green, it's tart, it's floral, it's even a little bit woody. Now about an hour in off my skin, Dodo starts to settle down. And at that point, the projection, the sillage, starts to be softer. So a nice little soft cloud, a little fragrance bubble but it's not as strong anymore because for the first hour or so, Dodo off my skin is actually a really good performer. After that though, it does start to become a softer scent. And once you hit the dry down, most of the animalic facets from the opening and the mid have died off. They've gone the way of the Dodo. Is it terrible, terrible, horrible. Ugh, I'm so embarrassed to have said that. It becomes more of a salty musk and sandalwood scent with fur and ferns working alongside those two notes. And when you smell that dry down, you really almost could picture a dodo being there or being there in the dodo's environment when it was still alive. The ferns from its habitat, even kind of a musky feathery smell from the dodo itself, uh, the fruits, the trees, again, just really interesting stuff. And once you do hit the dry down, Dodo does become more of a wearable fragrance, if you want to put it that way. It's not as challenging as it is in the opening and the mid. And I will say overall, the Dodo on a scale of zoologist, <laughs> um, from you know least challenging to most challenging, it's it's not going to be in the upper the upper echelon of challenging fragrances. Um, you've got things like again T Rex or Hyrax that are much more challenging than Dodo is. Dodo is though a completely unique fragrance. It is one of a kind and thank God for that. Dodo is kind of a fougere type fragrance, but it does not have your typical note of lavender in here. So it's kind of like a, a twist on a fougere, like an animalic twist on a fougere instead of going that typical clean lavender fougere route. Now I talked about the projection earlier. Longevity on this is good. Eight plus hours, no issues. Again, the projection gets a little bit softer after the first hour, so it's not gonna be a, a projection monster. It's not gonna fill up a room. Honestly, I don't think you would want the fragrance to fill up a room. It really works the way that it is. And I think that if the projection was greater, it would throw things out of balance. I don't think it would work as well. So I like it just the way it is. Dodo leans more as a daytime fragrance for me, and it's something that I'd wanna wear in mild to warm weather. Not really something I'd wanna reach for in high heat, 
not something you'd want to reach for when it's really cold outside either. And Dodo is one I would consider fully unisex. If you look on Lucky Scent, it actually has it trending a little bit masculine. To me, it's very slightly feminine, uh, but I guess that's just dependent on how you pick up on those notes. If you, if you pick up more on the lychee, maybe you'll think it's a little more feminine. If you pick up on the woods, maybe you think it's a little more masculine. Either way, in my opinion, completely unisex. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me for Zoologist Dodo. First Zoologist I've reviewed on this channel, but won't be the last. I got a bottle of uh, Panda, the original Panda. There are two versions. So there's the original, and then they uh, released a second version. And then I also have Chameleon, so I may do a review on one or both of those in the future. And I want to pick up more from this house so I can cover more of them because they're just super interesting to me in the same way that I love imaginary authors back here. Just when you have a fragrance that's telling you a story and you can kind of imagine what they're putting across and, and really kind of jive with the vision that they're giving you, that really does it for me. Conceptual fragrances like that just are some of my absolute favorites. And I do wear stuff like this, like imaginary authors, and I will wear uh, Dodo and Chameleon. <laughs> like, I don't even find some of those things particularly challenging. I know some people do, like A City on Fire by Imaginary Authors. I've worn that multiple times <laughs> out in public. I, I don't really care. I just think they're, they're fantastic. But let me know what you think about this fragrance in the comments below. Let me know which zoologist fragrance you would be interested in me reviewing. Let me know that uh, because that'll kind of help me decide what to pick up next. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time with another review.